one former Secretary General of the Ministry for Higher Education. And as you see from the village from Tianne, we say congratulations. The roots of community media broadcasting can be traced back to the 1940s in Bolivia, Colombia, or the United States of America. Local communities built independent communication structures to make their voices heard on educational, cultural, social, and political issues as they felt more and more underrepresented in traditional media. The increasing number of community media in the decades to follow is strongly associated with democratization movements, the rising importance of civil society initiatives in combination with calls for independent media and notions of freedom of expression around the world. The African media landscape, until the end of the Cold War, was dominated by state-owned media. New social, political, democratization and civil society movements demanded more political and social rights as well as open and pluralistic media. This paved the way for an end of many state monopolies in the media sector and the start of community media in Africa. In the beginning of the 1990s, community-based broadcasting was mostly related to development projects informing the local population that projects are taking place and praising the benefits of these educational, health or agricultural campaigns. This was rather a distribution of information and meant hardly any involvement of the local communities. Very soon, Local civil society organizations, NGOs, in collaboration with local communities, adopted the community media approach and started to include communities and their needs and demands in the programming. They started to produce media which are by, for, and from the community. Community media are an effort to democratize that public sphere and to suggest that the state alone doesn't represent the public sphere. The state is surely a legitimate player, but there are civil society organizations, community voices, which should matter in the public sphere. Community media can be a, a tool that facilitates communication between the two parts, but also between those who are uh, completely um, at the local basis populations because they can they can discuss of issues that are for common interest and they can come out with some solution that can be put in place by themselves. Community media so far as it is is a mixed bag of something. I mean that is to say you have sometimes individuals coming in with their radio stations but hand these community radio stations to the community to say yes I brought this station I mean it's my station I spend my money but I want community to benefit from it so I would define it as a, a collective responsibility kind of whereas uh, you have the station owners and also um, the community bearing hands or bearing hands in the running of the radios for a community media setup I think that it should be uh, a setup in which media organs that uh, work for the community and do things about the community should make sure that they involve members of the community so that together they can build a very sustainable community that is very healthy, peaceful, and you, of course, through all of this, you will find developments that will just flow naturally. In our context, having gone to, to, to know what is a global definition of community media, I always try to define it in Cameroonian context. The way I see it, I see it as media that is involved in the community. Media that is involved for the community, by the community. It may not necessarily be in the overview of having the community at the beginning, but I, I consider me media that has editorial policy towards peace, justice and development of the community as being part of the community media.
the key task of community media is uh, to also provide another version because you talked about diversity we are talking about giving another version of what uh, commercial and other mainstream media organs uh, give out there to the to to our population because there is always that tendency for people to listen to um, the official government radio and television there's always that tendency for people to listen and watch um, the, the the commercial TV and commercial uh, uh, radio consume commercial radio broadcast content and from that myriad we discover that most often the things that are projected are similar we have lots and lots of uh, commercial and public uh, media outlets, especially the social media, but providing lots and lots of information and uh, without really giving the information. People are, are lost. So he, from his uh, delivery, we were told to give the alternative of uh, what these other media organs do not give. We should look for a niche. Look at the human development side of our communities and present, give uh, diversity to the existing uh, media content. You also invite propaganda of the civil society, so that from their point of view, and also propaganda, and you just have to give the whole information to the population. And it's all about the, the, how you manage the discussion. You can even say, as a, as a discussion leader, well, sir, that's not pure propaganda, and what do you mean? And you give the voice to the, to the civil society, but you cannot um, exclude also their point of view, even if it's propaganda. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can say openly, oops, this is propaganda. Yeah. Enough gives particularly the DR Congo. DR Congo, we can, it, it's just um, a, a post or in conflict country. So we faced um, rebel groups, so now the, 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 the society is really as divided. So as a community media, we just try to, 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 to work about the issue that tries to, that, that seems to divide uh, people in, a, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So the work that we are doing is go uh, in, a, in 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 in, part, in some parts of the of, of the of the province where we have really issues where tribes are just trying to fight each others so we to go there and to, we, we we are organizing um, public speaking trying to ask those pa parts uh, divided w what the problem and now from the from the debate we understand we understand and they, or they also understand the problem and then after that we have also a specialist who is coming and just try to, to tell them this is a problem or this is not a problem mm -hmm. The major tax of community radios have been used as an advocacy tool and for community people or community beneficiation. Uh, remember that the country went through decades civil conflict and after that conflict, one of the issues that was raised by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has to do with the voices of the people. That people, the, the central government was not actually decentralizing some of, some of its activities. So those community radio stations are advocating for benefit and then at the end of it all we now have what we call the local councils. Local councils are made up of municipalities or at district level and so those community radio stations engage staff or workers of the, uh, the councils to ensure that they work in the interest of the people and also councillors. So that is the major one of some of the major roles of those local uh, community radio stations. Hello, uh, on RDC and plus particulièrement on Orkivu, uh, je dois dire que les, les radios communautaires ont, ont un rôle uh, très très important parce que elles accompagnent uh, les populations à la base uh, dans la circulation de l'information uh, parce qu'il faut dire que À un moment donné, les médias publics, les médias de l'État et les médias commerciaux étaient seulement concentrés dans les villes, mais avec les radios communautaires, on peut cette fois-là couvrir même les milieux ruraux, hein, donc dans les villages. Les formations peuvent aussi circuler comme en ville, mais aussi pour moi la circulation de l'information, c'est aussi les formations plurielles, 
où euh, cette fois-là, euh, même là où les médias publics sont présents, on peut, avec l'arrivée des radios communautaires, avoir une information euh, plus ou moins euh, plurielle où on attend des points de vue euh, diversifiés. Donc ce n'est pas seulement euh, les, les, les pouvoirs publics qui communiquent des choses à la population, mais aussi la base peut s'exprimer. La task of the media in Cameroon has always been to protect the community from the government. We are doing a lot of it. Now I want us to work again harder at protecting the community from their own laxity and their own lack of knowledge. Therefore, I think the community media has to train the community more into recognizing who they are vis-à-vis -vis the media, their own role and benefits to the media, what they can get out of the media. Then the community can ask more from this media. Because, for example, let me just use this example, community media should also be able to tell the community that you are cutting down your forest and you are burning it. Next season, your granite will not do well. They should be able to tell them that the way you are planting cocoa, if you are cutting down all the trees, the cocoa farm will not do well. They are supposed to educate them on certain issues that the community itself is doing wrong, while protecting the community also from the abuses of government and uh, multinationals. A good friend of mine, one of the pioneers of community radio in Africa, the South African Zeni Ibrahim, who was the founder of uh, Bush Radio in Cape Town, uh, once famously said, and it's very often repeated everywhere, that community radio is 99% about community and only 1% about radio. 99% about community. And if you forget that and lose sight of uh, the, the people on whose behalf we are holding microphones, people on whose behalf we are wielding cameras, then we lose sight of the very purpose of community media. So we need to put community back at the center of, of community media. Yeah. Not for profit, opening access to media, participation and representation of local communities and topics, transparent decision-making processes, and diversity of opinions are key components of community media. Through their work, community media add underrepresented voices to the media landscape in Africa and around the world. Community media give a platform to marginalized and local communities to express their culture, identity, language and concerns and thereby challenge the one-way communication of public broadcasters which are mostly controlled by the state and commercial media. However, the community media sector is as diverse as the communities who use the community media as a platform for their needs. So are also the tasks community media fulfill in their respective communities. The biggest challenge will be that of finances because communities, uh, community uh, uh, radios, especially in my context in Cameroon, they are not owned by the community. They are owned by individuals who dictate the pace on how things are supposed to go. And so the journalists are vulnerable because they can't pay themselves. They just need to work at the dictates of their proprietor. And so the biggest challenge will be how to get this community media to work as they are supposed to work, irrespective of the fact that they are owned by individuals. So now the idea of finances come in play. The idea of training personnel comes in play. The idea of infrastructure comes in play. The idea of equipment comes in play. So these to me are the biggest challenges that if we are able to to come across or overcome these challenges, then I think community media within my sphere will be able to function well as the community media is supposed to function. No matter where I go in the world, uh, including to stations in India, sustainability issue is uppermost in everybody's minds, and I think uh, for a good reason. Uh, but what I've been saying everywhere is uh, to understand sustainability in a slightly broader way 
not just reduce it to financial sustainability. I think there is the issue of uh, social sustainability, very importantly, meaning that there is a buy-in for your radio station from the community that you want to serve, that the community cares about this station, that the community feels that they own this station. I mean, if not legally, at least emotionally, they have a link to this station, that they feel it's a very vital tool in their own community building activity. Unless that social sustainability is there, no other sustainability can make stations survive. And of course, financial sustainability is a very key issue. A lot of stations in this region, Western Central Africa, like in other parts of the developing world, seem to be dependent heavily on donor agencies, on well-meaning NGOs, uh, which are trying to advocate a cause and they see community radio as an important instrument to further that cause. I mean, these are good causes and there are good NGOs. There's no doubt about it. But the stations realize that and uh, I don't need to tell them this, that NGO funding, donor funding is not going to be forever. Right? Uh, many of them work around projects. Uh, many of them are working to enable stations to stand on their own feet. And I think that is the direction to go. Use donor funding, NGO funding if necessary. Work on sustainability in the future. Because what happens when the funding dries up? What can the community contribute to the station? And I know that many of these stations are uh, serving very poor communities, communities living in extreme poverty, so they are not in a position to contribute monetarily all the time. Uh, but there are good examples from different parts of the world where poor communities are contributing, you know, even a dollar a month or something towards the community, uh, towards the community radio station, uh, whatever they can, so that there is a collective sense of ownership of that community. So community contribution is not just to give all the money required to let the station run, but is also to gain a sense of ownership. Le doit mettre à place c'est un système clair où on sait savoir qui valide les documents à archiver. Est-ce qu'il faut un seul webmaster, par exemple Est-ce qu'il faut plusieurs webmasters Ça, c'est quelque chose qu'on doit clarifier au départ. L'accès à Internet, qui euh, demanderait, en fait, que euh, dans les différentes stations de radio que nous engadrons à travers nos plateformes, on ait de l'Internet pour que euh, nos radios puissent nous transmettre au niveau de nos coordinations les éléments à archiver. Je crois que si, si ces deux éléments sont, sont bien clarifiés et présents, on peut bien évoluer. Ici, au Cameroun, especially with the local community media network where I am president, we do a lot of work, but the material is lost within one year. Our electricity supply is so bad that if we do work and you don't save it immediately, the next one, two, three hours, everything is gone. But if we have an archiving system that will enable us to do archiving, that we can store our past work, then we can always go back to it, retrieve it, and it will help future generations. What I would advise for a start, especially for community radios that do not have uh, electricity facility, our advice for a, a desktop or a laptop, you understand, per station, so that uh, they will train a specific person who will handle the information, who will upload the information, who will ensure that he or she serves as a gatekeeper, that the information coming in are credible uh, from the station where they are coming from. So these are things I think we need to look into now immediately. Uh, from my experience, a lot of community radio stations are so busy struggling to run their stations on a day-to-day -day basis, finding strategies to survive, you know, get volunteers, produce content on a daily basis, that they don't have enough time to pause, reflect, uh, document uh, their experience, and they can do with some support on that. And I think 
when I have also mentioned networking and exchanges, sometimes it's not always possible to physically meet all the time. There are expenses involved. There is time away from your station. So it's always good to see how we can leverage uh, IT uh, you know, that, that's available to create online platforms where they can exchange, share stories, uh, find ways of documenting their experiences, perhaps uh, share content, right? And there are such platforms in other parts of the world. And I'm happy to hear that uh, something like that is being proposed for this region uh, called the Community Media Archive. It, that will be an excellent uh, location for communities to uh, put together their profiles, uh, to become a little more visible to each other, uh, and to put up their content for others to download and play on their stations. Uh, so all the things that I mentioned that a network can do can actually be facilitated through an online archive platform uh, like, like this one. The Cameroonian journalist must ask, who am I? What am I communicating? To whom am I communicating? For what purpose am I communicating? What do I intend to gain from this communication? And if that Cameroonian journalist answers those questions before he does his work, he would build a society that would be good for him to do everything. Fair, fair hearing to everybody. So if, 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 if we are talking about a conflict where the government is also involved and the government is not given the opportunity to also say something, then we are not we are not playing a neutral role. That is the need for community media to assert themselves in a way uh, that uh, actually helps to democratize our our our, our communities, giving uh, opportunities for those in our respective communities who are not always given the voice to make themselves to be heard and uh, to work together as community media organs so that uh, we can share experiences, we can learn from the experiences of other community media uh, organs existing in uh, other parts of the country. Despite the diverse approaches in community media, they share common challenges and difficulties and develop strategies to overcome these problems. The challenges range from the setup of sustainable financial structures, crisis in the local communities, lack of technical infrastructure and training. Community media also develop strategies to cope with those challenges on local, regional and national level. Uh, so friends here in uh, this part of the world have been talking about a regional network and I've been happy to participate in these discussions to form a West and uh, Central Africa network. I think that's a great idea. I mean, Africa is a huge continent. Uh, things do differ from one sub-region to the other, and it's good to have regional networks. There is already an East Africa community media network. Perhaps there are similar networks in other parts of Africa. So if you have a regional coalition where you scale up issues to a regional level, then you can have inter-regional collaborations. East African networks working with West African networks, again, on, on similar ideas of giving strength, sharing experiences on a higher platform. And these regional groups can become part of international networks, like the World Association of Community Radio uh, Broadcasters, AMARC, is one such network. Maybe there are others. Uh, there are similar things in Europe, for example, right? So how can we uh, become networked to, to share tools, to, to share ideas, content, capacities together? And, and there, there's no better way than uh, become, becoming a network. Well, my biggest take-home message was that uh, as a community media network in which we are involved in, there is need for us to work in, uh, with other networks in a partnership, creating sub-regional networks so that we can be able to, to gain challenges, get, get knowledge, 
and be able to open our, our horizons to see how other networks are functioning so that we can work in synergy by so doing where we are falling short we can gain knowledge from other networks and also the fact that community media is supposed to be owned by the community is supposed to be run by the community and for the community and so we, we we have to involve our communities in our community media so that it's not a matter of those at the top owning it but the the bottom up approach was something that I really learned and I think if we implement it they will be giving voice to every strata of society by so doing will enhance peace.